So I co-hosted my first mead competition recently, and I want to tell you all about it. Let's get started. So the funny thing here is, about two years ago, a little over two years ago, I entered my first mead competition. And um, I, I sent my mead in, felt fine about it, whatever. And I, I just didn't think about it. This year, we hosted the Mead Stampede competition, which is a mead making contest here, hosted here in Oklahoma City. It's the first year we did it. And I use the word co-host a little lightly because uh, at the end of this whole process, I realized just how little I did compared to BC and the committee of people who um, made it happen. So we had we we had a bunch of people from all around the U.S. come in to help us judge, help us plan, all of these things. So I want to give a huge shout out to all these people right here. Thank you so much to this wonderful committee. Thank you to BC, who is was the other person hosting this competition. He, um, I mean, came in and just made it happen. There's so many behind the scenes things. Rob, who also is like the logistics master, he was the guy who made all of the labeling work, all of the behind the scenes, like what mead goes where, is a mess. So um, Rob made it happen, BC made it happen. All these committee me members are super, super helpful. Thank you to them. Y'all make me realize that I, as a co-host, I was, I, you guys are way more co-host than me, so. Now to, to talk about this, Mead Stampede, this competition was incredible. We had a lot, a lot of entries. We had 130 entries, totaling about 390 bottles sent into our world. They were shipped in from all over the basically US. They came in, BC held them at his house and this he had a ton of them there. And then we opened them all this past weekend for Mead Stampede, unboxed every single one of them and organized. The organizing is a huge pain. I had no idea how, just how insane it is, but it's a huge pain. We went through that, labeled them all, got them ready for the, the actual judging portion. So we started uh, our judging and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the actual score sheet that we used, I'm not gonna get specific on it, but I'm gonna talk about that. And I'm gonna talk about my little score sheet, mental score sheet. So every mead uh, was judged by two people, by a pair of people at least. So um, there are two people judging it and tasting so that there was not just one one opinion, but you could kind of balance and, and, and uh, go back and forth with the other judge. So we'd open a mead in a specific category, uh, whatever traditional mead, we would not look at the label, anything on it, other than a couple numbers to make sure that we wrote down the right things for the paper, and then we taste it. When we tasted it, we were going based off our palate completely. When we got to the end of our score sheet, we would look at the label and see if it matched up to what the person said. On that score sheet, there are things like aroma, and it had some little sub points. What's the aromatic of this? You can get points for that. You get points for how the mead looks. Um, is it clear? Is it if it is labeled as as still and it comes sparkling? You obviously can't get the full points for that because you didn't label it right. Uh, if it is, it had a portion for the flavor. So like, how did it taste? Did it have a lot of honey character? Did it have this, 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 all that? And then there was like a grand total. You could get up to fifty points. Here's where I get to talk about the fun point system. Some of you might know I'm a teacher. Um, lots of you might know, not know that I am a teacher that uh, I'm okay with being brutally honest. So uh, if you entered and you got a score sheet with my name on it, um, I was honest with you. And I tried to be honest, but also give some nice feedback to say like, hey, this is what could be fixed in these things. But we have lots of meads range from 20 points to 50 points. If you're in that 20 to 30 range, your mead was was actually pretty good. I mean, most competition scores, from what I understand from around all the competition land, <laughs> are like 
30 to 35. That's a pretty, pretty average score. Very few people go crazy and get up, 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 up. So 20 to 30. Your mead's pretty good. Had a couple flaws, could have some balance issues. It could have some things that just needed a little tweaking to be able to really go up to the next echelon. 30 to 40, that's about your average range. If you're getting in those upper 40s, you're getting pretty dang good. You know, you're, you're com combating a lot of the uh, flaws that you might have seen. 40 to 50 is, 50 is like, this thing has to be sold in the US or whatever. So, I should say in the US, it has to be sold in general. <laughs> Um, so we had lost people 40 to 50. We had a, we had a couple people 40 to 50, not, not a huge amount. If you got a score within there, um, if you got a, a low score, don't, don't beat yourself up. Use this as a learning opportunity. Please don't beat yourself up and say like, oh man, I can't believe they didn't score this how I wanted. These are, we had a whole panel of judges, so we tried to be as fair as possible. And again, pairing up and I'm brutally honest. Y'all, I, if y'all see me teach, uh, I just, I'm, I'm gonna be real with you. I, I'm gonna be real with you because I care. I don't wanna sugarcoat everything and say like, well, thank you for submitting. It looks like you you su submitted something, so I'm super glad you did this. Here are points. No, you sent me in whatever you did. If it feels great, great. If it was not so great, it's gonna be, gonna be true. Moving on. That's that score sheet. We did all of that. My score sheet, my little draw, what I've learned from this. Every single mead in the universe has a pep score. What is, what is a pep score? A pep score is a silly acronym for planning, execution, and packaging. So when you're submitting something, I look at my, my, little, my little brain, my brain thinks this. How did the planning side go? The planning is looking at the label and seeing someone say, this is a cherry mellow mel with orange zest. Okay, great. You got planning. Maybe you wrote down your yeast or whatever else. You, you've made your plan. Um, if there are a few cases where people write stuff down and I could tell that their planning wasn't great, they just like threw it together. So that's your plan. Execution is how did it taste? So your little cherry, uh, orange zest mellow mel. Did it taste like cherry and orange zest and whatever else? So that execution is probably the biggest little point system for me. We developed, or not developed, we leaned on the execution way more than the planning because we wanted to see how things tasted. So we didn't look at those labels until after we had done most of the scoring. We, we were not actively Basically, we were not actively reading those things because we wanted to be have an unbiased without looking for specific things opinion. Execution, super important. Last one is packaging. Packaging is also important. We didn't take points off for, for packaging or anything, but for me, I realized that the packaging, it'll either make or break your mead. So what I mean by that is, if you package it well, your mead will arrive in a nice manner, meaning that it won't be broken up and dead. We had a couple people send in things that were just uh, put into a box with no bubble wrap, no specific packaging, and it just didn't work out. They broke on in transit. So package your stuff well. Everything that I am talking about, this is a, a pep score, and it seems silly, but there are a lot of good meads that had a high pep score. They're pretty peppy, which is very nice because that's what you want. You want your mead to be full of life. You want it to be uh, executed well. You want it to be planned well. If you're planning a mead, make sure that you have some idea of what you wanna do, especially for a competition. I know that some people submitted things for the first time. Maybe that they sent in their second mead. And at that point, like you have some plan, some idea what you're doing, but you might not have as much of a plan. Always create a plan and then Whenever you're making that mead, make sure your execution is following suit. So those two kind of go together. My total wrap up, and I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna go too deep because doing the most actually did a video already. I'll put that in the description. He went through the 15 things he learned from this, and I agree with everyone. So I'm not gonna go too deep. My my little sub points: make sure your meads are balanced between acid, between sweetness, between um, floral 
or fruit flavors. Like, make sure that those things have this nice round character. They're not just all tart or all sweet or whatever. Have a balance. Second thing, make sure your meads are representing what you intend well, what your plan says. So balance is important, but does it truly hit the mark for a whatever you're making, cherry mellow mel. And then the last one will be make sure you package your stuff well, send it in well. That left a huge impression on us in general um, because we had people who were sending in things that were packaged in this beautiful way and then some people send in stuff that was packaged in a dirty dish rag. It just doesn't work out, have a lasting impression. Okay, thank you so much to this to everybody who supported this, who joined the Mead Stampede this year. It was fantastic. We had an amazing committee. Uh, huge shout out to those people. I can't tell you how excited I am for next year. Um, we are gonna do this again next year with pretty much the exact same process, maybe a couple slight changes since we learned some things, but it's gonna be incredible. You need to be a part of this. I would encourage you to go ahead and start making meads in anticipation for next year because you'll have some time to age things so that'll help you out quite a bit again thank you guys so much for watching thank you for supporting the mead stampede make sure you join this next year and i hope to see you guys in the future cheers